Jurassic World Dominion takes place a few years after the events of Fallen Kingdom and Colin Trevorrow's short film, Battle at Big Rock, where we get a small glimpse of what life will be like in a post-dinosaur breakout world on a global scale. Returning characters like Alan Grant, Ellie Sattler, Ian Malcolm, and of course Owen and Claire will be getting involved with the original novel's main antagonist, Lewis Dodson, the man who was responsible for helping Nedry sabotage Jurassic Park all the way back in 1993. Now with all that being said, there is one major component of the Jurassic series that has been teased here and there throughout the last couple of films, but hasn't really made any major return just yet. And from the small bits of behind the scenes information that we've been given so far, I think this could mean that that particular plot point could be coming back in a big way. <laughs> Hey guys, hope you're all doing well. Now for today's video, I wanted to talk about Isla Sorna and why I think if the people behind the next Jurassic World movie are playing their cards right, it could become a very important part of Dominion. Now the main reason I say this is due to the fact that the island has already been cryptically teased. This is not only with the embryo box that has the name Site B sketched on the front of it, but also due to the island's name drop in Fallen Kingdom and even some images of its dinosaurs being present in Jurassic World. Now a lot of fans seem to be under the impression that the island will be making its return in the fourth season of the hit Netflix series Camp Cretaceous, which if true could be the link that Colin Trevorrow revealed would actually help bridge the gap between the storyline of that show and the new movie. Now even if we put all of that stuff aside, it's still important to talk about the fact that Site B was already the location of two previous films in the franchise's history. Those of course being The Lost World and Jurassic Park 3. Now when the island was initially revealed to the public, it was met with a pretty mediocre reception and a lot of people thought that it was kind of a silly idea to create an entirely new island when they already had one full of dinosaurs in the first movie. Some of the criticisms towards The Lost World's introduction of Isla Sorna and its existence had to deal with the fact that critics felt that it all just felt a little too forced since Engine could have just been written to clone new dinosaurs in their nearly operational theme park on the mainland. While others were always confused as to what happened to Isla Nublar, but hey, those are discussions for totally separate videos that I've already actually done videos on in the past. Still, the importance of Site B should never be underappreciated. Seeing that in lore, this was the location that John Hammond originally planned to clone all of Jurassic Park's dinosaurs before they would get shipped off to the new park on Nublar. And the fact that the events of two entire movies took place there over 20 years ago. Now, I don't think it's too much of a stretch to believe that the reason Isla Sorna wasn't necessarily referenced in full glorious detail during the last couple of Jurassic movies was more than likely due to the fact that parts two and three weren't really received anywhere near as well as Jurassic Park. Which, if you were like me and grew up loving the second film, either your parents or adults in general, they would probably tease on you for liking that movie. But hey, it is what it is. That being said, Fallen Kingdom has pretty much an identical Rotten Tomatoes score, and while it grossed way more money and its IMDb stats are higher than JP3, I personally feel like there's no real reason to not talk about the island that exclusively anymore. So this brings us to the movie's actual plot, and in Jurassic World Dominion, it's kind of being alluded to that Biosyn is coming back to do some serious damage in some way, shape, or form. These are the bad guys that got away in the first movie, and also the ones that serve the purpose of being major antagonists in Michael Crichton's books. Colin Trevorrow has already stated that Dominion will be a celebration of the entire franchise, and since Site B already got teased on that embryo box, and Camp Cretaceous is rumored to talk about it in the next season, I'd say the likelihood of it showing up in the next film is more than just a theory. But what capacity can we expect to see Isla Sorna in the new film? Well, personally, I kind of feel like it's unlikely that any of the characters actually go there in the movie. In fact, I think that if that were to be something that they wanted to do, it may actually go against the whole global pandemic thing that they've been planning ever since Fallen Kingdom came out. So I just don't see how a trip to Site B 
could make a lot of sense for the film's runtime as far as plot goes. However, I do think that what the island could be utilized for is some great information of what happened to Biosyn all those years ago, and maybe even telling us how the origins of Jurassic World came about. We already know in the canon that Simon Mizrani started plucking species from the second island after the events of Jurassic Park 3, so having that play out in a scene somehow in the new film would feel rather natural. But in regards to Biosyn, I actually do think that the island could be utilized in a pretty cool way if they tie it into some of the plot that went down in Crichton's second novel, The Lost World. Now, the Lost World movie isn't really an adaptation of the book at all, and if you've never read it, you'll probably be surprised to find out that the only characters that are actually in both versions are, are literally just, I think, Ian, Sarah, Kelly, and Eddie Carr. And all of those people are radically different in the book compared to what you see in the movie. The basic plot of the film was also totally different with pretty much the only major thing that got adapted being the trailers going over the cliff in the middle of Spielberg's story, which is actually close to the end of the Crichton novel. Sure, there are other things that were slightly adapted, but in all honesty, the Lost World book and film are two totally different animals that shouldn't really be talked about in the same way at all. And it's really just another reason why when the Lost World came out, a lot of Jurassic Park fans that read the books didn't really like it. However, one other thing they both did have in common was the introduction of Site B. And the book actually used that island as something of a target for Lewis Dodson. Now, the reason Dodson wanted Site B in the novel was obviously because it was full of dinosaurs. However, interestingly, not only was this character not brought back in the second film, they didn't even talk about Biosyn at all in the sequel. In fact, none of the sequels ever brought the guys up that literally took down Jurassic Park, which is really weird considering Site B would be public knowledge after the events of the second film. I mean, a T-Rex ran through San Diego. You'd think those guys would have tried something after 1993, but no or at least not yet anyways. That's why I think Site B could end up being something that gets talked about or actually becomes something of a major plot point for Dominion in a lot of interesting ways. For example, as far as we know, most of the dinosaurs on that island actually died or even went extinct. This is something that was brought up and made canon via the viral marketing campaign for Fallen Kingdom. And even in that movie itself, the characters repeatedly mention that Isla Nublar, and not Isla Sorna, is the home of the last living dinosaurs on the planet. Now, whether or not this was just propaganda used by the DPG to drum up support for saving the dinosaurs of Jurassic World, I don't personally know. However, I would say that Biosyn being responsible for some of the poaching that we know went down on the island would actually tie into what Dodson wanted to do in the Lost World book, while also giving us something of a throwback to Roland Timbo in the movie, which is my favorite character, in case any of you guys didn't know that. You see, in the second novel, Dodson's big plan was to go to Isla Sorna, steal some dinosaur eggs, and bring them back to the company in order to create a hunting preserve. Now, they'd also do all sorts of other stuff with the dinosaurs, since they're a genetics company after all, but at the end of the day, that was the most elaborate plan that Dodson had. And since the people making Dominion have already teased that Site B embryo box in a behind the scenes still, I wouldn't be surprised if these ideas were still on the table for the next movie. The only thing that kind of makes me question it at all is the actual state of Isla Sorna as a whole. Because if the island shows up in Camp Cretaceous, I personally don't see why they would try to say that it's devoid of dinosaurs at all. I mean, you go from one dinosaur island to another, so you expect to see dinosaurs, right? That's just how it is. But then again, if both Camp Cretaceous and Dominion stay with the whole Site B extinction route, which has already been alluded to, well, then it still means that Site B could play an interesting role in Dominion's plot, albeit in just a much more subtle way. Like, for example, if Camp Cretaceous tells us that most of those dinosaurs are no longer on the island, I think Dominion could lean into that information via dialogue, security footage, or even flashbacks during the course of the movie. All in all, Isla Sorna is a very important part of Jurassic Park's past that is alluded to being a part of the new movie. And if it does wind up being not only in the last Jurassic film, but also the animated series, I think we could be in for one incredibly interesting addition to the lore overall. Anyways guys, those are all just my own thoughts on the subject matter. Now what do you think? Will Site B show up in Jurassic World Dominion? Or was that embryo box just some kind of background material that could end up on the cutting room floor? Whatever your own thoughts and opinions happen to be, I'd love to hear them. In the comments down below. 
Now before I go, I'd like to thank all of my game wardens, as well as all of my engine executives. I'd also like to thank all of my park workers and engine hunters as well. Guys, it really means the world to me that you all continue to support what I do, and I never want you to ever forget that. Now, I'd like to thank you all for watching today's video, and hope that you all enjoyed the content. If you feel like I deserve it, I'd appreciate the like, and hope that you'll consider subscribing if you're interested in hearing from me again. I'll see you all in the next video, guys, and as always, take it easy.